Don't post everything on Facebook and everything. No, 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 no. Because guess what? Those ones are sizing up to say, ha, huh? ah, boy, he looking good, he has money. And they don't call you anymore, you know, people. They send you texts, they WhatsApp you, oh, Johnny, bring me Nike, bring me Gucci, oh, send me iPhone, send me Samsung, send me Gucci. What the hell are you talking about? Send me what, I can't buy it myself. <laughs> One of a gold medal for me no. Champion boy you know the damn thing go One of food I'm a singing and then go Hello People, if you're new immigrants to the rich country and you have no one to mentor you, no goals and don't know what to do watch this video I designed this video to give you some ideas of how to navigate the financial situations and also come out on top Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe yeah <laughs> immigrants my immigrant family never do this most of us when we migrate and we want to go to say america canada and england we want to make money we want to make big money but my immigrant family never do this never go back and build or buy a house in the same area that you grew up. Let me repeat that again. Never build or buy a house in the same neighborhood you grew up. Why? Because it's the same people that you grew up around who is going to eat you. There's a saying in life, Chicken Mary, the hawk is near. Meaning that when the chicken is having fun and distracted, the hawk is sitting on a branch ready to strike. Another saying goes like this, Ants follow fat, bees follow honey, and thieves, beggars, and scammers follow money. So, when you migrate and go back home to build your nice big colonial house, you know, the mansion that we have in our mental psyche to say that we have arrived. When we migrate to do that or buy the big house, there are those who sit in on the sidelines, preying us, casing us out, trying to find out when they can get a piece of your pie. So therefore, Never go back and build or buy in the same neighborhood you grew up. Always do your own feasibility study. Meaning that, check the crime rate. Check the income disposition in your neighborhood. Meaning that, if you come from a poor background, don't go back in the same background. Go in the affluent neighborhood and build your house or, better yet, buy one in one of those, what they call it, gated communities, those new developments, and always buy them on paper. People talk to me. Always buy those ones before they are built. The reason why you go to a different neighborhood is that no matter how long you're in North America and have your back home mentality, you become culturized to the North America or to the rich country's ideology and culture. Meaning that we always expect someone to call us before they come and visit us. We don't want people to come and knock at our gates and say, hey, my baby is sick. I need to go to the doctor. Can they lend me a money? I'm just passing by. No, because we go under so much stress here that you want to know that the person coming to visit you is fully aware that you invited him. I don't want nobody to come and roll up on me like that. And in the meantime, while I'm talking about roll up, have you hit the subscribe button yet to roll up on me? Have you hit the like button yet to roll up on me? Don't you see that jam can is walking and whistling? I'm riding, baby. I'm giving you some good information while I walk. Yeah. <laughs>
Don't get me wrong. If you're from a safe country like, say, Barbados, or Dominica, South Korea, you know, good countries, definitely, I would say go back home and build where you came from because you live in a very safe society. Even although you might be from those safer countries, use wisdom. There's always that hyena or a few who always want to come and take away your catch. So use wisdom. Now, most of us who migrate, we have this big house mentality. I want to have this big house. I want to have this mansion on a hill. I want to show everybody, say, hey, look at me. I arrived. I'm happening. I'm the big kid on the block. No, that's a colonial mentality. It happened to me. I remember when I left Jamaica, I've always had this mindset that I definitely would order it out. I want to build a house or buy a house back home in case they throw me out people. At least I have somewhere to go. It is a foolish man who doesn't really build from where he came from because at the end of the day, this ain't our land. So you have to use wisdom. But what happened is that I built this nice house in a nice little scheme I bought and I put up about seven more rooms on it and three more bathrooms and I make it into a four unit apartment. And people, when I did that, you know what they say? Why he rich? The man have money. Look how the man building up nice. That's the mentality of people. That's what they say about me, that I am rich. And people, I ain't rich. It's just a matter that I am ambitious. But the problem is that I was trapped in a colonial mentality. Yeah, people, I was trapped up there. Yeah. <laughs> they had the nerve, the audacity to let black folks suffer for 460 years. And at the end of the civil rights movement, rather than going back and saying, let's find out what has happened to black folk for 460 years. Have they been psychologically, emotionally, politically, educationally damaged? It's definitely good, without a doubt, to feel gratified to know that you build this nice big home. But people, let me ask you the question. How many rooms can you live in? How much money you have to spend to build this big home? You can't fully enjoy it. And the reason why we migrate in the first place is because we want to make money in a different country. But if the mindset that we're going to work to make the money to go build the house, we're going to perish. And let me clarify that for you. The Jewish people have a saying that the first thing you do when you go to a foreign country, you learn then you earn. Most of us, when we migrate, we earn, but we never learn. So we get burned. And we wonder why, how come we're not getting ahead? Because we're doing it wrong. The reason why we left, we want to make money, no doubt. The problem is we have no one to mentor us on how to make money. So when we even make some of that money, we end up perish with it. Case in point. So when you migrate, I would advise your first thing to do, earn but learn. Go to school. Go to school. Learn a vocation that is needed, not what you feel for. Something that is needed in the society and something that you can make good income off. You need to make capital. Now, after making your money, people, what you need to do after that, without a doubt, you need to buy real estate. Even before you get to buy real estate, the first thing you do after making capital, you need to invest that capital, I would say in the stock market, invest it. Or you need to put that capital in some kind of investment vehicle that will multiply your return. And when you make enough capital for a down payment, you need to buy a house. People, I cannot stress that any more forcefully. 
you need to buy a house. Why? <laughs> you see, the entire economic system is built on slavery. And our slavery has been abolished. Our slavery has been abolished. So they have to create a new form of slavery. And the new form of slavery is land. Land, you know, that's slavery, meaning that. You've never seen any animals paying rent and mortgages people. You've never seen that before. And because animals don't pay rent and mortgage, how can we human beings pay rent and mortgage? God says, I create man in the image and likeness of me. I give him dominion over everything that every human being has the same natural rights. So how come some of us born and have no land? This is because of something you call primitive accumulation. Where, say for instance, in Canada here now, the Europeans came and killed off the natives and they set up a new system of private property laws. And by doing so, now they have rights to the land. For you to get food, clothes, and shelter, you must sell your labor at a price. And this is the new form of slavery, meaning that now they give you a mortgage. And a mortgage in French means debt. Yeah. So the reason why you buy a house, people, because the new economic system that is built on capitalism and private property will never recognize you until you own a piece of the real estate. If you don't own a piece of the real estate, look at that nice horse there, eh? See, I'm walking in the country. If you don't own a piece of the real estate, the system will not recognize you. And because of such, you cannot really, I would say, transact or trade properly in a system where you don't have enough capital and you don't have good credit. Without enough capital and credit, but most importantly, if you don't have a mortgage, the system really doesn't recognize you. Why? Because the system wants to know that for the next 25, 30, 40 years, they can put the noose around your neck and trap you in a debt spiral. And they literally suck every penny out of your wallet. And they say, you're living the American <laughs> or the Canadian dream. Big trick. But that's how the system maintains itself. That is why the mortgage system, mortgages, are the biggest revenue generator for the banks anywhere in the world. Mortgages, debt, and it's a system that traps us. The thing is that it's for us to find a way to use it at our advantage. So therefore, you need to buy a house. When you're buying a house now, people, listen to me carefully. Always buy what you call a pre-construction property. It is not wise to buy built. It's only wise to buy built when there's like a recession, property value drop, and you can get a, a very good deal in an affluent neighborhood. That's when you buy built. It is always wiser to buy pre-construction. However, the builders are getting smart. What the builders are doing, they're literally pricing in for the future value of the property in the pre-constructions. So you have to be very careful of that because everybody wants a piece of the pie. So without a doubt, you buy pre-construction. Why is that? You buy the pre-construction, which is simple. It's gonna take about two to three years before that property is built. By the time that property is built, the value of the property has gone up. The value of the property peaks. Now, remember now, 
When you buy the property, you only pay down the 10 or the 20%, and some builders will give you a year to pay down that down payment. And when you make that down payment, listen to this now, you are not paying any mortgage until you take up occupancy in the property. And let me throw this in there. Before you even plan to buy a house, get a mortgage pre-approval or a mortgage assessment before you buy the property so that you can know how much you're qualified for before you go and make that purchase because you might be, what they say, you might be underqualified or overqualified, but if you're underqualified, they, they have what you call uh, the B lenders and the C lenders who will charge a higher interest rate or a fee to give you a higher mortgage. So people, how are you liking this so far? Drop the comments, people. Let me hear what you think. I am walking, but my brain is saturated with information. So I said, let me decide to share it with you all. So immigrants, as I said, the first thing you do is buy the property and buy pre-construction. If you pay close attention to your real estate agents, do you realize that most of your real estate agents will not take you to pre-construction houses? Because most of those houses are apart condominium apartments. They are given to brokers, not agents. And agents don't really make any money off pre-construction. The real estate agents will always buy the pre-construction properties, but they will take you to buy the house that's already built. Simple, because they want a commission. So family, let me make it very clear. Again, this is a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor, nor neither am I an analyst. I am the sharing ideas about what I have done, what I know to impart upon you. If you need to get credible information, go seek your financial advisor or a reputable banker. I am just a common sense guy. Now, like I've said before, the house you buy in the richer countries should be your cash register. When you work hard in the rich country, your motive is to buy a house pre-construction so the equity is built up and you take some of that equity a few years down the road and you go build or buy two or three houses somewhere else or back home so you can Airbnb and do booking.com. Remember your motive for coming to the richer country is to make money. But we've been programmed that making money is to do a nine to five, which is important because you need a good nine to five to generate enough capital. What you do with the capital decides your standard of living and way of life in the future. When you get that equity and take it out, remember now, as I said before, when you buy a house or build a house back home, don't build it where you grew up. Because it is always the person you grew up around who are more likely to eat you. Because guess what? When you're making money now, everybody becomes your friend, but they just want a shortcut to their success through you. One of the biggest mistakes many immigrants do when we arrive to the richer countries, we become so overwhelmed by the glitz and the glamours and the bright lights, and we lose focus. We say we want a better life, and in no time, guess what? We get caught up in consumerism. We want all the brand name this and all the brand name that, the Gucci this and the Gucci that, and the bugs them biting me. <laughs> 
But don't lose focus. When you get your credit cards, don't run up your credit cards for foolishness. The richer countries are built on credit. So you need to work enough money, save enough money, but your main focus is to buy a house so the system can recognize you economically. And when the system trusts you, the system will lend you a lot more money because you want the capital. And when you get that capital now, you use the capital now to invest in real estate and the equity build up in the real estate now, you move that money maybe to some profitable franchise or overseas where you can buy more properties and you can actually use them as Airbnb or booking.com. But if you get caught up in the hip and the bling, Poverty is going to be your brother and also your sister. And while you're at it, get some smart people to be your friends who can advise you. The Bible says there is safety in the midst of wise counsel. Yeah, Jam can talk. Yeah. <laughs>